Hi, I'm Jennifer Gleason Blue of The Resilient Body, and today we are looking at the feet. So we're doing five fast fixes for the feet, um, because your feet really matter, and, uh, and they matter for themselves, but they also matter from, uh, from the ground up. So your overall health and wellness is dependent on the feet. So the first of our five fixes is going to be to align the feet, to get them in the right place. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring the screen down a bit. Um, you might want to grab a strap or something like that if you have that. Uh, and, and so what we want is for the center of our ankle to be directly under our, um, our ASIS. So on the front of our pelvis, we have these two, um, two bony spots, your anterior superior iliac spines or ASIS. So you have one on each side of your pelvis. And I want you to go ahead and find those. If you're having trouble finding them, you can lie on your back and that can help. So the distance between these two points should be equidistant to the distance between your, uh, your ankles. So you can measure this in a couple of ways. One is to get a strap or a string or something like that, a cord, get a finger on either side, right? And, and measure the distance between your ASIS. And then to drop that down and see that it matches up to the distance right between your heels. So that's one way you can do that. Or you could drop a straight line, a plumb line from uh, from your ASIS, hold it there. Uh, the strap's a little too wide, but something else would work where you could get that uh, to see that it falls right over top of your ankle. So once you have your feet pelvis width, um, you're gonna wanna straighten the outside edges of your feet. Uh, most of the time we stand in some version of this or, you know, it all varies. So wherever you are, once you've got your, your ankles pelvis width, you're gonna keep your heels planted. And I want you to walk your feet in until the outside edges are parallel. So you can see this if you're using a mat and it has lines on it, you can use that if you have hardwood, even this rug I'm using, or you can put a dome or a block, something like that on either side, you know, you would want two so that you could see, okay, the line of the dome or the line of the block, those are parallel. And then I know that the outside edges of my feet are parallel. So everything that we, we're gonna do, we're gonna pay attention to this stance and I want you to to be mindful of even walking this way. So that's gonna be something you can implement. So the first stretch we're gonna do is we're gonna use this dome. If you don't have a dome, you can use a mat uh, rolled up or a towel. I want you to bring your right foot up onto the dome. So, uh, so we're just doing a simple calf stretch here. And, and this is our first exercise. Now you can certainly come all the way forward um, but, but my guess is that your calves are short enough that, that you're going to want to, your non-stretching leg is going to be a bit behind your stretching leg. So you may, I have really short calves, so you, your feet may be equal, maybe you've got one in front, maybe it's a little bit behind. Depends on how dense what you're using is and how high it is. But I want you to be mindful of a couple of things. Your feet are pelvis width, the outside edges are parallel, you have weight in the heel of your stretching foot. So when you come so far forward, if you're, you're doing this and your, your heel's coming off the ground, then you're certainly not doing it right. And I also don't want your body to be leaning forward. So we tend to fall when we walk and not really use our muscles to their full metabolic capacity. And one way to begin to retrain the body is to stretch it in the way we want to use it. So in this case, we want to be upright. We want to walk in an upright fashion. So we want to stretch the calves in an upright fashion as well. All right, so now I want you to, to just add a slight bend into that stretching knee. So this is, this is a different calf muscle called your soleus that we're getting to now. And when we add the bend, then we're able to get to that muscle. Notice if you're gripping around your ankle, see if you can relax. I'm just gonna hang out here for another couple minutes, a couple moments. 
I'm holding all of these for about 60 seconds. All right, so then you're gonna switch sides, bringing your left foot up onto the dome, off face forward so you can see what that looks like as well. Um, all right, so left foot up, your heel is firmly planted. For me, that means that the ball of my foot is about on the apex of the dome. I'm making sure my, my feet are pelvis width and the outside edges are parallel so my feet are straight. And we're gonna hang out here for a bit. So. If you do this in a mirror, you'll, you'll be able to notice a few things. So one of the things that I notice when I do this in a mirror, in this case in the camera, is that I lean, right? <laughs> I lean toward my non-stretching foot. And that's going to take some of the work out. So then I can begin to, how can I even my body out, spread the weight between my legs? You might also notice if your pelvis goes one way or the other. And you can... Get all of yourself straight to the best of your ability. Can you lift and lower both kneecaps? If you can, that means that you're not holding on with your quads. You want your kneecaps to be relaxed. And are you falling forward or can you, can you back up with your non-stretching leg until you're really upright and you're not needing to use a lot of muscle to keep yourself where you are? Kind of a relaxed place. So now I want you to throw that bend into your knee again. I'll turn sideways. This tends to be my tighter side. So I don't typically bend as far on this side as I do on my, my right leg. All right. So just letting, letting yourself be in this place. Not not, not choosing to be somewhere that you need, that takes, that is effortful, but choosing to find uh, a more restful place at the, at the boundary of your range of motion so that you have some stability even as you stretch the soleus muscle here. If you have plantar fasciitis, um, tending to the calves is incredibly important. So. Your, your calf muscle is a little too short um, and, and that tissue then wraps under the heel into your arch. Uh, so so we, the, the best place to start really is here with the calf. How can you lengthen the calf and restore some full function? Is there any place you can relax? All right, let's come on out of that. We're gonna stretch. Um, we're gonna uh, stretch the top of the feet next. So I want you to, um, I want you to send your right foot back. You're gonna tuck those toes under. I'll show you from the front. So again, my feet are are pelvis width apart the outside edges are, the outside edge of the standing leg is straight, um, I mean the foot is straight, and I'm also being mindful of where the heel is. So it, you can sort of see how the heel might track in, it can sometimes fall out. And if you're in front of a mirror, or in my case a camera, I want you to be mindful of keeping the heel hidden for now. And if that means that you need to adjust where your, you know, how deeply you're going into that stretch, then that's fine. You know, you just find a good spot for you. And hang out here for a while. Most of the time when you first start doing this stretch, you'll need to come in and out of it quite a few times. That's just, just the way it is. <laughs> this is, tends to be a very tight part of the body. All right, so why don't you go ahead and send that left foot back. Adjusting in order to have pelvis width. It's a little deceiving in the camera. Um, can you lift and lower the, the kneecap of your standing leg?
This is an exercise you can even do as you're sitting. You can just scoot off to the side of your chair and stay where you are. I'll just turn so you can see it from the side as well. Um, and of course you can always intensify depending on how far back you reach. But I do want you to be mindful of, of keeping your body upright and not pulling one of these. Seeing how much tension you can let go out of your standing leg and just really open up the front of the foot. If you wear flip-flops, this will be a this will be a tight spot for you. If you wear any shoe that is not well attached to your foot, um, the toes usually work really hard by either lifting up or gripping down. And so this this stretch will do a lot to open them up. All right, when you come out of that, I'm going to move my camera down um, for our next two, our last two. Um, and you're going to want a ball. Um, most of us have a tennis ball or something, so you can, if you have that, you can use that. Because I have really short calves, um, no matter how much I've worked on them, uh, the length is still difficult for me to accommodate a full tennis ball. Uh, so I do find that a, a smaller ball for me works. This is actually a cat toy that's really, really dense. Um, so where, whatever you want to do, you can do. And we're going to divide the foot up. We're going to do an arch stimulation. And so I'm going to have you, uh, let's see, let's make sure that's straight. Well, tilt down a bit here. OK, so you're going to divide your foot into four spots. Um, in the arch, so you're not gonna you're not gonna put the, the ball up here, or and your heel's gonna stay firmly planted. So just divide into four quadrants on your foot, and we're gonna work all of those. We're gonna start with uh, the right side. So you're gonna get your ball, and uh, I'm gonna have you just choose that first spot. And you're gonna let your foot drape over it. You can place your non-stretching foot uh, wherever makes sense. So if you have a, a tennis ball, you're probably going to want to keep your non-stretching foot further back just for a little bit more balance. If you're using a small ball like mine, then uh, you'll be able to get a little bit more, a little more equality in the placement of your feet. So why don't you, uh, why don't you just play around with your toes a little bit here. See if you can do that while keeping your kneecaps down. I noticed mine immediately engaged. All right, why don't you move on to your second spot? I'll turn this way. This ball gets totally hidden. And again, you can play around with your toes. You can also just hang out here if you would prefer. Just kind of letting that sensation move through your whole body. The sensation of having your foot displaced. Just a small amount can change the entire way that you are standing, the entire tension pattern that you have. on to this third spot. So I'm going to turn to yeah, the side here. So my heel is still able to be firmly planted. Now if I had a tennis ball, my foot would be, uh, I wouldn't be able to, to stretch this close to my heel or work this close to my heel. I really like to just check in first and kind of notice what goes on. And then I might move my toes around a bit. I 
Now let's move on to that fourth spot. So for me, that's really in here. Usually we divide the foot up into nine distinct areas, the arch itself into nine distinct areas. So if you want to play with this further, I invite you to do that. Um, in one of my classes, we, we divided the, where I was a student, um, we divided the foot up into 36 or something distinct spots. Um, it took about an hour to work on a single foot. No, it took about an hour to work on both feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very intense. But the, the sort of... The innervation in the feet, the way the feet felt afterwards was amazing. So why don't you step off your ball, whatever you've been using. How do your how does your one foot feel compared to the other foot? Just with this few minutes of of waking up the arch. Why don't you switch feet? Finding again we're in four spots, the heel remains firmly planted. You're gonna drop your foot over the ball. I'm gonna show you what this looks like with a tennis ball too. I'm going to go back to my other one. Um, simply because I've done actually a lot of work with the tennis ball lately and I'm kind of craving a different, a slightly different experience here. So I'm going to give myself that. Playing around with the toes. Can you lift and lower your kneecaps? And let them be relaxed. Are you gripping in your pelvic floor? Often we'll just hold a lot of tension there and see about just letting that go. Maybe in your jaw as well. Moving on to your second spot. Spreading the toes, lifting the toes. Maybe trying to lift just your third or your second or your fourth toe. Let's move on to the third spot. One of the things that I've noticed, I have a three-year-old son and he uh, has been barefoot. Uh, we live in a, uh, you know, a climate with winters and he is, and feel free to start moving your toes whenever it feels good. Um, he's been barefoot most of the summer and you know at the playground and outside and even on the cement we live in the city um and the change in his toes from the winter into the summer as that has happened has been remarkable his toes have spread wider uh he has a lot more dexterity in his foot and it's been really interesting for me to watch how he can he can sort of step on something and his foot will accommodate that and it doesn't you know something uncomfortable and it doesn't throw his whole body off because he's got mobility in his feet. Um, mobility that I am just beginning to regain. All right, let's come to that fourth spot on this foot. Ah, <laughs> this feels amazing.
especially um, if you are thinking about switching to more minimal shoes or if you um, you're looking to make those more doable for you uh, I highly recommend you do footwork regularly uh, even if you know maybe you you wear a totally flat shoe but you you want something more like a Vibram five finger shoe something like that then um, then doing the doing this kind of work is going to make that a much smoother transition and much less likely to get injured which is really important <laughs> all right so why don't you step off now the last thing we're going to do this is our fifth so we aligned our feet we did a calf stretch and with the addition of a soleus stretch we did a top of the foot stretch and we did this arch stimulation with the ball and now we're going to lift our toes a bit um, so you're going to get your feet pelvis width, outside edges straight, and I want you to just plant your big toe and lift your other four toes. You might notice that your fingers get moving as we work on this, that's cool. So you're going to leave that big toe planted, and I want you to just touch your fifth toe to the ground, fifth toe up. Now, your toes may not like move separately at all, and that's cool. Some of mine move together, but keep sending the signal. Fifth toe down fourth toe down, fourth toe up, fifth toe up, fifth toe down, fourth toe down, third toe down, third toe up, fourth toe up, fifth toe up. Can you wiggle your kneecaps? Fifth toe down, fourth toe down, third toe down, second toe down, Second toe up, third toe up. Can you wiggle your kneecaps? Fourth toe up, fifth toe up. All the toes down. See about in this position, thinking about drawing your big toes toward each other as you then just lift the big toes. So for me, they still really go off to the outside edges, but I'm thinking about it. It doesn't help this carpet moves. I mean, here we go. Let's try again. Yeah. And then you can certainly practice lifting in, in sort of this order too if you want. Well, that is it. Those are your those are your five fast fixes for the feet. They will go a long way, um, especially if practiced regularly, and I encourage you to do so. I encourage you to look for footwear that would support um, support this change to whole body health because what what happens at the feet is in essence what's happening the whole way up thank you for joining me i'm jennifer gleason blue with the resilient body and i'm so glad to have supported you to have healthier feet take care